Admiral James Somaray, 1st Baron de Somaray or Sosmaras, GCB, the 11th of March 1757 to the 9th of October 1836, was an admiral of the British Royal Navy, notable for his victory at the Second Battle of Algeciras. Topic: Early life. He was born at St. Peter Port, Guernsey to an old island family, the eldest son of Matthew de Sosmaras and his second wife Carteret, daughter of James Le Marchant. He was a nephew of John de Sosmaras of Sosmaras Manor and the elder brother of General Sir Thomas Somaray equerry and groom of the chamber to the Duke of Kent, and afterwards commander-in-chief of New Brunswick and of Richard Somaray a surgeon and medical author. Their sister married Henry Brock, the uncle of Major General Sir Isaac Brock and Daniel de Lisle Brock. Many of de Sosmarez's ancestors had distinguished themselves in the naval service, and he entered it as midshipman at the age of 13. Upon joining the navy, he dropped the second S to become de Somare. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Naval service. Topic: <laughs> Early service in the Mediterranean and American Revolutionary War In 1767 Somaray was entered as a volunteer on the books of HMS Solbay although he never set foot on the ship, studying at a school near London until in 1770, Somaray joined the Montreal in the Mediterranean. Placed on board HMS (1764), he was rated midshipman in November 1770. A transfer to HMS Levant 1758 in February 1772 until she returned to Spithead in 1775 gave an opportunity to take his examination for lieutenant. In 1775, at the age of 18, he was ordered to Sir Peter Parker's flagship HMS Bristol in North America. Somaray distinguished himself under Parker, showing courage and being promoted to acting lieutenant at the July 1776 Battle of Sullivan's Island which required the Bristol to fire broadsides at Fort Sullivan. The engagement lasted 13 hours and 111 men were killed on the Bristol, moved to HMS Chatham 1758 as temporary 5th lieutenant, he was given his first command, the tender Lady Parker. On promotion to lieutenant in 1778 he was given his second command, the eight-gun galley Spitfire and after 47 engagements, unfortunately, he had to run Spitfire ashore and burn her on 30 July 1778 when a French fleet under Admiral Destang arrived at Narragansett Bay. Serving on land at the Battle of Rhode Island before returning to Portsmouth. Somare next served as third lieutenant on the Victory, under various admirals until it became Vice Admiral Hyde Parker's flagship, by which time he had moved up to first lieutenant. He moved with the admiral to HMS Fortitude, on which he was present at the Battle of Dogger Bank on 5 August 1781, when he was wounded. He was promoted commander and appointed to the fireship to Siphony. In 1782, Somare sailed his ship to the West Indies with dispatches for Samuel Hood and arrived in time to witness the closing stages of Hood's operations at St. Kitts on 25 January 1782. <laughs> <laughs> Battle of the Saintes While commanding HMS Russell 74 guns, he contributed to Rodney's victory over de Grasse at the Battle of the Saintes on 12 April 1782. During the battle and on his own initiative, Somare took his ship out of line to assist in the capture of de Grasse's flagship, Ville de Paris. This action prompted Admiral Rodney to remark that, "...the Russell's captain is a fine fellow, whoever he is." When the war in America was finished, Somaray went ashore and did not go to sea again until 1793 when he was given command of the frigate HMS Crescent, a 36-gun fifth-rate frigate. <laughs> Action of 20 October 1793 It was in Crescent that Somaray was involved in one of the first major single ship actions of the war when he captured the French frigate Reunion, in the action of 20 October 1793. 
British casualties were exceptionally light, with only one man wounded during the engagement. In reward, Somare was knighted by King George III and given a presentation plate by the City of London, although he later received a bill for £103.68 d, the equivalent of £9,700 as of 2011, from a Mr Cook for the honour of a knighthood. Somare refused to pay, telling Cook to charge whomever had paid for Edward Pellew's knighthood after his successful action. Somare later wrote to his brother that I think it hard to pay so much for an honour which my services have been thought to deserve. <laughs> <laughs> Channel Islands Station While in command of a Guernsey-based squadron consisting of three frigates, HMS Crescent 1784, HMS Druid 1783, and HMS Eurydice 1781, a lugger, and cutter a planned invasion by 20,000 French soldiers of the Channel Islands scheduled for February 1794 was frustrated and cancelled due to Somare's vigilant eye. On 8 June 1794 on the way from Plymouth to Guernsey, he encountered a superior French force of two raises, three frigates, and a cutter. The French squadron outgunned the British by 192 guns to 92, but Somare succeeded in getting his frigates to safety by sailing between rocks on the west coast of Guernsey and around the island to the St. Peter Port anchorage. The British lugger and cutter had returned to Plymouth before the start of the action. The British threat to any invasion force stayed intact. <inaudible> <inaudible> Battle of Cape St. Vincent After being promoted in 1795 he was appointed to the 74-gun HMS Orion in the Channel Fleet, where he took part in the defeat of the French fleet at the Battle of Gras off Lorient on of June. Orion was one of the ships sent to reinforce Sir John Jervis in February 1797, when Somare distinguished himself in the Battle of Cape St. Vincent. During the early stages he helped repel a sustained attack on the British line and covered the retreat of HMS Colossus when she was forced to retire from the action. Colossus had sustained serious damage, her sails being virtually shot away and it looked as though she would be raked by Spanish warships, until Orion intervened. Later, when the engagement had turned to a general melee, Somare forced the Salvador del Mundo to surrender before attacking the Santissima Trinidad with the help of HMS Excellent. Somare was certain he had forced her surrender too when the arrival of the remainder of the Spanish fleet forced Jervis to break off the engagement. <laughs> Blockade of Cadiz and the Battle of the Nile Somare remained with Jervis's fleet and was present at the blockade of Cadiz from February 1797 to April 1798. In May 1798, the Orion joined the squadron under Nelson's command that was sent into the Mediterranean to seek and destroy the French. Somare was Nelson's second in command at the Battle of the Nile where he distinguished himself once more, forcing the surrender of the pupil Souverain and the 80-gun Franklin. Battle of Algeciras and Gut of Gibraltar On his return from Egypt he received the command of HMS Caesar, of 80 guns, with orders to watch the French fleet off Brest during the winters of 1799 and 1800. In 1801, he was promoted to the rank of Rear Admiral of the Blue, was created a baronet, and received the command of a small squadron which was to watch the movements of the Spanish fleet at Cadiz. Between 6 and 12 July, he performed an excellent piece of service, in which after a first repulse at Algeciras he routed a much superior combined force of French and Spanish ships at the Battle of the Gut of Gibraltar. For his services, Somare received the Order of the Bath and the freedom of the City of London. In 1803, the United Kingdom Parliament bestowed upon him an annuity of £1,200 a year annuity to Admiral Somare Act 1803. During the Peace of Amiens, 1802–3 Somare remained at home with his family in Guernsey, and when war broke out again he was given command of the naval forces defending the Channel Islands. He therefore was not present at the 1805 Battle of Trafalgar. The Baltic Campaign In 1808 he was given command of the Baltic fleet with his flag in HMS Victory. 
Somare's mission was to protect the British trade which was of vital importance for Royal Navy supplies and to blockade enemy ports such as those under French control in northern Germany. The Russian fleet was also kept under blockade until Alexander I reopened Russian ports. Sweden, under pressure from France, declared war on Britain in November 1810 but Somare showed conspicuous tact towards the government of Sweden and her shipping, correctly guessing that the Swedes, like their Russian neighbours, would eventually defy Napoleon. Charles XIII later bestowed on him the Grand Cross of the Military Order of the Sword. Denmark, a French satellite, also needed to be kept under observation until it was invaded by the Swedish army in 1814. In 1812 Napoleon invaded Russia with half a million troops and Somare's fleet was instrumental in hampering French operations. <laughs> Latter years. At the Peace of 1814, Somare attained the rank of Admiral, and in 1819 he was made Rear Admiral of the United Kingdom, in 1821 Vice Admiral of the United Kingdom. From 1824 to 1827 he was Commander-in-Chief, Plymouth. He was raised to the peerage as Baron de Somare in 1831 and died in Guernsey in 1836. In memory of Somare's achievements, there is a statue of him in the National Maritime Museum in London. The public bar at the Duke of Normandy Hotel in St. Peter Port was named after Somare and features a portrait of him. <laughs> Relationship with Nelson Somare and Nelson served together in 1797 and 1798, but their relationship was not a close one. In fact on a number of occasions it became quite strained. They first clashed after the Battle of Cape St. Vincent. Somare had forced the surrender of the Santissima Trinidad but was unable to capture her because Jervis was forced to break off the engagement. Nelson attempted to console Somare by telling him that the Spanish had confirmed that the Trinidad had indeed surrendered. Somare tersely replied, Whoever doubted it, sir. I hope there is no need for such evidence to establish the truth of a report of a British officer. In May 1798, when Somare was appointed to Nelson's squadron in the Mediterranean, Nelson preferred to confer with Trowbridge and even though, as the senior captain, Somare was technically second in command, he was often left out of their conversations. After the Battle of the Nile, while in conversation with Nelson, on the quarterdeck of HMS Vanguard, Somare suggested that the tactic of doubling the French line had been a dangerous one as it exposed British ships to friendly fire. Before he had a chance to explain, Nelson cut him short and angrily went below. Nelson decided that Somare should escort the prizes home, and they never served together again. Later, Nelson wrote a letter saying, I could have formed no opinion of Orion that was not favorable to her gallant and excellent commander Somare and crew. However, the awkwardness between them remained. Family In 1788 he married Martha La Marchant 1849 of a wealthy Guernsey family, who brought the estate now known as Somare Park into the marriage. They had three sons and four daughters, the eldest, James 1789 succeeded to the peerage, was a clergyman and died without children. He was succeeded in the peerage by his brother, John St. Vincent Somare 1806-1891. Appearances in naval fiction Somare appears as a minor character in C. S. Forrester's Hornblower novel The Happy Return as a rear admiral and is mentioned again in the later Hornblower novel The Commodore as the admiral soon to be commanding in the Baltic. He also appears as admiral of the Gibraltar squadron in Master and Commander and also as admiral of the Baltic fleet in The Surgeon's Mate. Books from Patrick O'Brien's Aubrey Maturin series. In Treachery, 2008, U.S. title, The Privateer's Revenge, by Julian Stockwin, Samarez purported orders actually a forgery result in the disgrace of Thomas Kidd. Somare returns as commander of the Baltic Fleet in the Baltic Prize, 2017. 